Hey y'all, hi. So, this is my current lipstick collection. Almost. There are two little lippies that are off off to the side. The opening shot just looks a lot cleaner and nicer without them. But pretty much all of the lipsticks that I currently own as my own are here in this little acrylic container. I do have a couple of lipsticks kicking around that I'm reviewing, but I don't consider them to be my own because I haven't made the decision yet that they're worth keeping. It's smaller than it's been because I recently did a really thorough declutter of my entire makeup collection. And when it comes to lipsticks, this is what was left at the end of that. And I haven't really gone through and swatched it all. I'm kind of curious like what's here. I mean, I know what's here because I decided what I was going to keep, but I'm curious about the breakdown of colors and finishes and tones. Like, did I keep a lot of reds, a lot of neutrals? And so I'm just going to swatch all of my lipsticks with you and we'll discover together what the shape of my collection really is. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a little while, then you know that I like to really use what I have and I don't like to have too much. And one of the reasons that I don't like to have too much is that I like to really use what I have. And if I have too much, then I can't get really good use out of it. So that's part of why my lipstick collection ended up this size, which to me, as someone who handles a lot of lipstick as part of her job, is pretty small. But I want to point out here that my makeup collection is really, really different from how it used to be before I started a YouTube channel. It's different because in a way, it's ever-changing. And that is entirely because I review makeup on the internet. If I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would have way fewer new lipsticks coming into my life, so my collection would be more stable. But given that it is this way, my hope is that by checking in about what I'm keeping and what I'm using, I can provide interesting content for you. So I just wanted to get that out of the way up front, and I also want to say that if you're new to my channel, if this is the first time you've watched one of my videos, then welcome. I hope you enjoy it, and if you do, I hope that you will subscribe. Now, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Okay, wow, I love this number of lipsticks for me. <laughs> I feel like this is a, I, it's an approachable number, but it also gives me a sense of comfortable abundance, as I like to say. I love this, I'm very pleased. I'm having the feeling of like the post to declutter pleasure looking at this. I did that declutter all of my makeup at once and I'll link that video down below just in case you haven't seen it and you'd like to see me declutter all of my makeup at once. So I did that and I haven't really sat down with my remaining collection since then and and assess the situation. So I'm doing that today with lipstick and I am saying that I like what I see. What should I do? Should I try to organize it by color? I'm gonna try to group these lipsticks roughly by color. Okay, so this is pretty wild. I separated them into three categories. Reds, browns, or I guess this is like brown nude, browns and nudes, and pinks. So there are probably pinks and browns that some people would consider to be nude, but I am calling these like the brownish lipsticks, even though they really have a spectrum from light to dark. And I'm calling these the pinkish lipsticks, even though they too have kind of a spectrum from light to maybe mid-toned. I don't really have any dark pinks. And then these are all of the reds. And it's eight, eight, and no, what is it? Nine, nine, and eight. So I have almost an exactly even split among these categories of color. Although I kind of feel like Glossier Lucite. It's so sheer that I actually think of it as a tinted balm. So I'm going to kick it out of this video because this is really just supposed to be about bullet lipsticks. The other one that I have, Villa, is more pigmented. 
The color is darker, and on me, this really reads as a lipstick, even though it's also nourishing and semi-sheer. So it's gonna stay in, because I wear it like a lipstick. So I'm gonna go category by category with the swatches, although, I don't know, I had a dream of fitting them all on one arm. I don't know if that's gonna be possible, but I think that I kind of wanna try, and I think I wanna start with the reds. I put them sort of in order. I tried to put them from lightest to deepest, and it's also kind of, in a way, a brightest to muddiest, because the sort of orangey, rusty reds are at the end. I'm not sure if it's going to be an exact gradient of any kind, but it's going to be roughly some sort of gradient. Well, I guess you could say I have a type. This is nothing short of comical. I'm gonna go through really quickly and tell you what each one of them is. And of course, I will link every single one of these lippies down below. But I know that you're probably wondering what exact color, what formula, what brand some of these are. So I'll tell you. This top one right here, this lipstick is the Gucci Voile formula and it's in the shade Goldie Red. The second one down is Mandarin Bolero. It is an iconic Givenchy lipstick and this one was limited edition. So this is in limited edition packaging, but Mandarin Bolero is a constant in the Givenchy lipstick line. The third one down, this one right here, is one of the new Kier Weiss lipsticks. It's in the shade Confidence. The fourth one down, this one right here, is this incredible dragon lipstick. This is from ZC, and it's in M05. ZC originally released these dragon lipsticks just in three shades of red, but they've recently come out out with a couple more shades. They actually sent one of them to me, hold on. Yeah, I have it right here in its packaging. I haven't swatched it yet. This is one of the new colors, it's M13. It looks like it's kind of a soft mauve of some kind, like a reddish, almost like a nude brick mauve. It's a pretty color. Anyway, moving on, so the fourth one down is a different ZC lipstick, the one that I own and that I've had for a while, it's M05. The fifth one down, this one right here, is a Kier Weiss lipstick, Euphoria. This right here is Lisa Eldridge Velvet Dragon. Third from the bottom, the only non-bullet style red lip that I own, this is 3CE Soft Lip Lacquer in the shade Hashtag Explicit. Second from the bottom is another Gucci lipstick. This is in the Gucci matte formula and it's called Janet Rust. And then the very last one, the very bottom, is this Slim Glow matte lipstick from YSL. It's in the shade 214, which I believe is called Illicit Orange. So I took some close-up footage of these swatches and I'll roll that footage now. I also took some footage of these swatches under slightly different lighting conditions. Turned off one of my lights so you can see how they look when they're not so cleanly lit. And I also turned on my ring light, which is right here. It's a, a yellower light, so you could kind of see how they might look under different tones of light. But you don't need to look at these swatches under a bunch of different lighting conditions to see that they're all very similar. Like, these are a bunch of red lipsticks, especially when you consider the wide range 
range of the shade red and how many different kinds of red there are on the market. They're clearly not the same, you know what I mean? They're not all dupes, but they're all grouped together on that very, very broad spectrum of different kinds of red. So I'm immediately feeling really glad that I did this because this shows me that I definitely don't need any more bright orangey reds, which is basically what these are. And it's funny because when I think about my lipstick, I think that I have a lot of really rusty reds, like almost orangey reds, but I don't. I just have this one down here. And then these richer rusty reds, they're rusty when compared to like blue reds, but they're not actually that rusty in isolation. What I actually have a lot of are these kind of like brighter, almost fluorescent reds that are kind of rubbing elbows with watermelon. I didn't realize that my red lipstick collection had gotten edited down almost to the point of one dimensionality. Looking at them all swatched out like this is definitely discouraging me from acquiring more of the same, but because I really like this kind of red, it's also making me feel more excited about wearing more red lipstick, which was another secret agenda of mine in filming this video. Because I've said it before and I'll say it again, lipstick is one of my favorite kinds of makeup, if not my favorite kind. And it's weirdly my least worn kind of makeup. And especially these days, I've kind of been doing the least. I haven't even been able to bring myself to wear lip gloss. It's just been like lip balm every day. And so I'm hoping that swatching all my lipsticks will reawaken my genuine desire to wear lipstick. And I already feel that happening. The ones that are standing out to me the most right now are Illicit Orange, this one on the bottom, a perennial favorite, extremely wearable, interesting, and nuanced lipstick. I also like this formula. It's just a little bit waxy and has a slightly, I don't know, like a slightly sheer quality to it. The other one that's standing out to me is Mandarin Bolero. The second one from the top, this one right here. When I swatched it, I was just like, wow, I can't wait to wear that. I clearly gave up hope of fitting all the swatches on one arm, but I think that I might be able to fit some of another category on this arm and then all of the rest of them on the other arm so that we'll be able to see all the swatches laid out together. And that's what I'm going to do. For from here, I'm going to move on to pinks. Let's put what I think are going to be the darkest pinks down here underneath the reds, and I'll put the light pinks on my other arm. Okay, so on this arm, and I just, I don't know. I mean, I clearly failed at putting them into any sort of order at all. They, I just don't know my pink lipsticks very well, or I don't know, I feel like this is a mix of pink, mauve, nude. There's one that some might even call like a pinkish red or a coral. These were just the sort of not red and also not brown lipsticks. This one right here is Revlon Rum Raisin. That's this lipstick. One of my favorite drugstore lipsticks. These two look really surprisingly similar in color on my arm. Maybe I knew this before, that they're kind of dupes for each other. This one right here, the less shiny one, is the Lisa Eldridge Luxuriously Lucent Lipstick in Kitten Mischief. And the really shiny one is the Glossier Ultra Lip in Villa. And I'm actually gonna declutter Villa based on this information because I didn't realize that they were so similar in color. I love the look of both of these on my lips, but I shy away from wearing Villa because it's so shiny and slick and it's very high impact and very slidey and I wish that I wore Kitten Mischief more. So I feel like in any situation where I would want this, I would prefer Kitten Mischief. 
Oh, but I'll leave it out here for the time being so that you can see what it is if you're like curious about the swatch on my arm. And then these four over here are super interesting. This is another ZC lipstick. It's the Picasso Collection number 923. And that is such a pretty color. I mean, honestly, look at that. I, I don't know. I feel like I don't know this lipstick very well and so I don't wear it very often, but this swatch party is making me want to wear it like tomorrow. This swatch right here is this product. It's uh, from Rosie Huntington Whiteley's makeup line and it's the shade Abstraction in this product which is called the Lip Crayon. I think it's just called Lip Crayon. That's a really really pretty easy to wear color. This very bright pink is a Finding Ferdinand lipstick that my friend Ted made for me. Ted's YouTube channel is Buffalo Beauty Boy. It's clearly not the kind of color that I usually wear. I just couldn't bring myself to get rid of it because I love Ted and it's so unique and I love that he's pushing me outside of my comfort zone by sending me this lipstick and I would like to wear it more for all of those reasons. In this moment, it's screaming from my arm as being the only actually pink lipstick that I own. It's, a, it's really very much the cheese stands alone situation right there, but super fun. And I love that it's got that kind of bubblegum quality, but its texture, its consistency makes it surprisingly wearable for me. And then this last Last one right here is an M Cosmetics Infinite Lip Cloud. It's in the shade Cashmere Creme. None of the other Infinite Lip Clouds made it through my declutter. I feel like I think that I love them. I say that I love them. I love the colors and I really love the formula. And then I just never wear them. The one, I used to get a ton of use out of Faded Clementine and French Nude. And both of those I had worn a lot. They were like really, really old. So if they hadn't been so old, I would have kept them. They got decluttered because they were so old. But I had a couple of others and I just, I just never wear them. I don't know what to tell you. And I'm not entirely sure that I know why. But I wanted to keep one. I wanted to keep this one partly because I wanted to keep one. And also because I knew that I didn't really have another color quite like this. So those are all the pinkish ones, I think. I mean, we'll see what happens when I swatch out the next category. I feel like my main takeaway from this section is that I want to wear this lipstick more often, but I mean it looks a lot like all of those reds I love, so maybe we're not surprised. Okay, this is my favorite category. I saved the best for last. These are the grungy shades, the neutral lipsticks. They range from quite light to quite deep. This is probably gonna be the most dynamic range of all three of these groups. And I can't wait to swatch them. Let's go. Y'all, I have never felt more passionate love for a set of lipstick swatches in my entire life. I love these lipsticks so much. I feel like all the other lipsticks can just take a hike, except for maybe Illicit Orange can join the party. I'm just gonna move this over because it's easier for me to sit. I'm sorry these swatches are a little messy. I am right-handed, so I've been doing all these swatches with my left hand onto my right arm, and I also have a bunch of makeup on my left arm so it's been extremely awkward because I'm trying not to smudge these swatches or get them on my shirt or anything like that. But we did it. We're here. Let me tell you what they all are. Remember the pink ones ended here. So the top swatch in this gorgeous group which is taking my breath away and it's all I ever want in my life is Lorna Dune which is another Gucci lipstick. This is the Gucci satin formula. The second one down underneath Lorna Dune is the Victoria Beckham posh lipstick in the shade 
lead girl. The third one down, which is extremely matte, is Lisa Eldridge Velvet Fawn. And then the one underneath Velvet Fawn, which is also quite matte, that's this liquid formula from Kaleidos. It's the Kaleidos Cloud Lab Lip Clay in the color Dune. Kaleidos sent me a whole bunch of lipsticks in this formula, and this one was my favorite. Underneath that, this is sort of a weird swatch because the Glossier Generation G lipstick is a weird one to swatch. It's sort of semi-sheer. It's like matte-ish and kind of balm-ish. So it doesn't swatch super well, but you can see that the color is great. This one's in the shade Leo. And then underneath that, I feel like these last four are the real tour de force. We have Revlon Mink. That's this one right here, the satiny one. Underneath Revlon Mink is Maybelline Raw Chocolate. Underneath Maybelline Raw Chocolate, we have this Gucci lipstick in a royal scandal. This is also the satin one. This is my favorite lipstick right now. I'll, I'm just gonna say it. How did this happen? What is that? There's lipstick everywhere, y'all. Anyway, these days, this is my favorite lipstick. It's reigning supreme, and I have a hard time imagining anything unseating it. And then down here on the very bottom is another classic, which is Maybelline Gone Grage. So of these four on the bottom, three of them are drugstore lipsticks, and one of them is Gucci. I love these four lipsticks. And someone recently asked in a comment how similar a royal scandal is to Gone Grage. You can see that they definitely have something in common, especially compared to, you know, all the other lipsticks on the market. But they're also very different in undertone. Gone Grage, it's got a sort of purplish undertone that makes it really grungy, especially on me because it fights with my natural undertone. So it's very impactful. It pops in its way and it makes me feel... I don't know, very like cool and it's it's a very cool girl color. A Royal Scandal is also a very cool girl color, but it's just a little bit warmer. So it complements my natural coloring more. I would actually say it's got a little more green in it in a funny way. So if you're looking for a lipstick that does what these do, I think that in this kind of color category, undertones really matter maybe more than people think that they do. If you're olive skinned, I'd recommend a Royal Scandal or even if you're just warm or if you have like yellow undertones. If you're cool toned and you're looking for something that looks the way that a royal scandal looks on me, then Gone Grage might be the one for you. So those are what I would call the browns. I have learned from this part of the video that, I mean, I guess I already kind of knew this, but I have been kind of reawakened to the fact that this is the lipstick category that makes me feel the most passionate. And I actually think that what I'm going to do is to put all of these lipsticks in the front and actually, I'm going to put them in this order. I feel like when I look at my lipstick collection, I'm going to look at it and remember that this front row is this beloved row right here. I think that that's going to be good for my relationship with my lipsticks. How should I do the other ones? Okay, so those are the pinks. They're in the second row. And then, so one of the browns Lorna Dune sneaked up here. Which red should sneak down to the second row? I guess it's gonna be illicit orange because that's the one that I was the most excited to wear. Okay, this is very exciting. I feel like for some people, it's less gratifying because the same brands aren't grouped together. You know, when I first brought this out, we had like all the Gucci and Lisa Eldridge ones in the front, and that was really fancy feeling, really exciting. But I'm very sensitive to color, and I feel like what I'm trying to do here is to create a connection between the way that the lipsticks look in their packaging when I look at them on my vanity and my memory of the colors that they are, like my knowledge of what they will do on my face, so that when I look at them, I feel tempted in the way that I feel tempted by the vision of these swatches, in the way that one feels tempted by paints, by art supplies. So I feel like organizing them this way after having swatched them 
them out, it's going to make them feel more welcoming to me. And that's one of the things that I wanted to get out of doing this. So that is it. These are my current lipsticks. This is my current collection of lipsticks. It's basically a bunch of reds that pretty much all look the same. A beautiful spectrum of brownie nudes and some weird pinks that I don't know how I feel about them. <laughs> That's really what we have going on here. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I greatly enjoyed doing this. And I don't know, I kind of maybe think I should keep going and do some of my other makeup. Let me know what you wanna see next. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Thank you.